If you're in the Airbnb game, you're probably a nosy neighbor in more ways than one. You want to know how well your neighbors are doing with their Airbnbs. What's their occupancy rate? How much money are they renting out their houses each night? And how much revenue should you be expecting to make from your house or property? Maybe you're thinking about buying in a different area and you want to get an idea of what occupancy rate and revenue you can expect in those areas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get raw data from Airbnb just like this so you can project how much you can expect to make on your future properties and investments in Airbnb, either by where you live or in any location around the world. To get the raw data from Airbnb, I'm going to show you a technique called network traffic interception where we're going to use the Airbnb website normally, but we're going to take a closer peek at some of the structured data that Airbnb sends to our computer that the website then uses to construct the HTML. So instead of scraping the HTML like a lot of other scrapers do, which is difficult and very brittle, we're actually going to look at the underlying JSON data that Airbnb sends and they're much less likely to change. Now keep in mind, this is technically an unofficial API, but it's generally okay if you just sort of copy the data that they send because they're sending it to your computer anyway as a result of you using the website legitimately. But if you go out and access these endpoints outside of an official app, like with a program, well then that may or may not break their terms of service, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to take that risk. So let's get started and I want to know the occupancy of this entire apartment. So find it on Airbnb, just click on any listing here. And you'll notice in the URL, it'll say airbnb.com slash room slash then an ID. This is the listing ID you're going to be able to get the availability for. If you watch my other video, Airbnb listing scraping, you'll be able to get a big bunch of these IDs for a particular city. So for example, in New York, I showed how I got a list of 37,000 of these IDs. So what I could do to get the whole city's average occupancy rate and patterns is I could go to all of these one by one 37,000 times and we'll do what I'm going to do here to get that occupancy rate. But I'm just going to show you how to do it once. So scroll down and what you'll do is you want to look for this calendar here. This is showing you when you can book. So right now I don't see any availabilities. You can just keep looking and looking and looking. And wow, they're really booked. Uh, so I'm, ex I'm interested in getting the raw data behind this calendar. So let's check out the network traffic. Right click somewhere in Google Chrome, hit inspect, and go to the network tab and you'll see something called XHR. This XHR is going to show you the JSON that goes back and forth as well as some other messages that the JavaScript client will send back and forth between Airbnb. So refresh the page so we can get a fresh load and we should be able to see uh, Airbnb sending a request to get those availability dates. Okay, so you'll see a lot of things coming in here. Some of it's like tracking stuff. A useful thing you can do is sort by size in this column over here and scroll up to get the largest size responses. And you'll see something here called homes underscore PDP underscore availability. Hmm, maybe this is what we want. So let's click on this and we can see the request URL that the web browser made to Airbnb servers, the ones that it would be against the terms of service to use outside of the regular website. So we can see what it's doing. It's asking for availability. It's putting in a listing ID like the one I showed you in the URL and it's putting in, it looks like a start year and a start month of October and it's telling me to get 12 months under the count. And if you look at preview, you'll see the data that Airbnb sends back. So it's something called calendar months and it's already November roughly. So let's look at November and then I can see days and I can see November 1st. It's not available. That corresponds exactly to the calendar that we saw. And if we scroll into, what do we say, June? Here I start seeing some true ones here on June 21st. So that corresponds to what we saw on the website. So I'm going to say that this availability most likely corresponds to this endpoint here. Now because we can't actually query this outside of the web browser because of the terms of service, we can just go to the response here. And if you hit command A and C, you can copy this and you can paste it into a text editor somewhere on your system. So I'm just going to paste in the JSON and format it real quick. And great, now I can see for every calendar day from now until a year into the future, I can see what the availability is, when certain days are available and when they're booked or not. Now once you get the data in JSON, you're kind of home free and you're free to stop watching this and do whatever you want with the JSON. But if you want to look at the JSON in aggregate so I can look at a whole market like New York and look at tens of thousands of listing availabilities together and do aggregate statistics, you're probably going to want to load the JSON into an easier to use format like a CSV 
where each row can represent a date and a listing. So you could load this into a database or look at this into pandas like I'm going to do in a few minutes. So how do we go from JSON from Google Chrome into CSV? Well, it takes a lot of patience. So what you do is you open up Microsoft Excel and you just go through here and I'm going to copy the listing ID here. So 323, da, 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 and I paste it into column A. And then I go through each date here. So this was November 1st. And I copy each of these JSON keys into my Excel file over here. So then I get the date, if it's available or not. And I just go one by one until I populate all the columns here corresponding to this. So each row represents a combination of a listing ID and a date. So the next row here would be the same listing ID, just with a different date. So here would be 11.2, and it's also not available. So just keep doing this. You'll see I sat here and did this uh, about 438,000 times. I just sat here and did it one by one. Uh, I don't have a whole lot going on in my social life, so I just sit here and do this. Um, it's a shame, though, that Airbnb doesn't have a public API because if they did, it would look a lot like this page here, which I have linked to below. This is an unofficial resource that talks about what an unofficial API from Airbnb may look like. Not that I can endorse using it because of terms of service complications, but they can just talk about it here. So this has a few videos on the topic that has links to open source software of what other contributors have done into showing how you can actually download and automate Airbnb interactions with client libraries. Uh, there's another video on how I managed to scrape all the New York City listings uh, from Airbnb. And you can see some actual endpoints here that if they were public API endpoints, you could execute them on the Steve C data platform and do all this automatically. Like if I looked at availability, the endpoint we just used, I could actually go ahead and run this directly on the platform and you'll see it accepts a listing ID as an input. And what I can do is hit this execute button down here and it would go for one listing ID and then fetch all that JSON and denormalize it into a flattened CSV file exactly like the one I showed you that I definitely didn't use this green button for. And what's also great about the workflows feature is that I could input a list of listing IDs, like a list of 37,000 different IDs I got from the scraping video that I showed you for my listings, and I could let Steve C run all this in the background and it would aggregate that into a single CSV file that I could then download without having to sit here and manually do everything like I definitely did. So once you get your CSV file, no matter how you get it, you can start doing some interesting things with the data in aggregate. You can load it into Pandas and visualize it like I'm going to walk you through right now, or you can load it into a database and build your own web app with the CSV. So just real quick, I'm going to walk through some basic data analysis in Pandas. There's a link to this below so you can follow along on your own without having to copy and paste from this video. So the first thing you want to do is build a pandas data frame from the CSV. That's in this line here. You just load the CSV. And we want to do a few little cleaning things with the data. One thing I notice is this column here, available for check-in. It says it's true if it's available, false when it's not available. But in some cases, it's actually null. It doesn't exist, which I found in some initial research. It seems to mean that the listing is not available on the market. Uh, I believe some Airbnb hosts, they can pick days that they don't want it to be available. So that probably means it shouldn't really count in the occupancy rate because the owner wants it off the market. So we only want to look for rows that actually have a true or false value for this. So that's what these two lines do. Another thing we do is we create a new date column, which actually takes the date string from the initial CSV and converts it into a pandas date time uh, object. And the last thing I do is I just make sure we only look at future availabilities. So today's October 30th. I'm only interested in rows with availabilities in November and beyond. And then after that, I can preview the data frame here. It looks pretty much like our Excel spreadsheet. We have a listing ID on each row as well as the date. And we also get a price for each row. And what's interesting is the ones that are booked, we can look at the prices for the ones that are booked versus the prices of the ones that are not booked. And you can see here my date, my new derivative date column is over here as well as is available as a Boolean. So the first thing I want to do is look at the distribution for each of the listing IDs in my data to see what the occupancy rate is for the next year into the future. Now again, keep in mind, this is only going to show me for the next year what percentage of future dates are booked or not. So if I'm a brand new house with no customers, I'm going to have a 0% occupancy rate because all my future dates are available. 
if I'm a really busy booking with you know people booking for months in advance, I'm gonna have a really high occupancy rate. So here what I do is I group by the listing ID first, and then I get the is available flag, which is a Boolean, and in pandas, I can apply the dot mean function to that, which is gonna convert that between a zero and a one for each listing ID. So a listing ID that's available all the time is gonna be closer to a one, because uh, that's true, where a listing ID that's barely available is gonna be closer to a zero. And we can just plot a really quick histogram to get a sense of what the data looks like. So here I can see of the about 1,000 or so listings I've got in my sample, I can see that here the ones that correspond to zero, meaning they're not available at all, shows me about 150 of them. So it looks like less than half are actually pretty booked. And then over here on the right side shows me the really available ones. And what's nice is we can verify this real quick. So if I look at this method call again and I run dot index max, it'll show me the index, the Airbnb ID, because I'm indexing by listing ID on the right side over here. It's gonna show me a listing ID that's highly available. And if I go to Airbnb and put in the ID here, 11943, I can actually look up the listing ID and verify that it's really available. So here's the place and it looks pretty available. I don't see it listed at all or booked. So maybe it's brand new, it says no reviews, it looks like they just got started. And likewise, I can do index min to get the listing with the lowest availability and check that in Airbnb. And here, this is on the Lower East Side. Uh, looks like it's a pretty active user here as a super host, 100% of recent guests. So it looks like there's a lot going on here and lo and behold, it's unbookable. It looks booked until for months in advance. So this guy's doing a really good job at getting his property uh, sold. So now we can look at the supply over time of booked homes versus unbooked homes. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group by if it's available or not and then get the date for each of those two groups. So I'm gonna have a time series for booked listings and a time series for unbooked listings. And then I'm gonna get the value count. So for each date, I wanna know how many are booked and how many are unbooked. I'm gonna plot those two here. So I can see, no surprise, yellow means it's available. There are not as many available right a couple days from now, but I can see as time goes on, as I get into December, availability goes up and the green shows the booked listings that goes down. So it's natural, it looks like within about 30 to 60 days, there's a natural climbing where availability goes up and the book listings go down, which just seems normal. Then I can see here a real spike around New Year's of the availabilities going up. So it means people are actually listing their homes around New Year's because I can see both of these lines are going up for New Year's Eve. It means people in New York are saying, well, I don't usually Airbnb, but maybe I will for New Year's because I know I can make some extra money. And you can see that there are also these other spikes here in the beginning of each month where, again, availability goes up, both booked and unbooked. So something weird is going on. It looks like for about a week in each month that availability goes up, supply in the market goes up. Now this could be hotels because keep in mind this data does include some listings that are hotels in Airbnb now. Uh, these could be other coordinated listings uh, from Airbnb. You know, sometimes super hosts have multiple properties, so we really don't know what these are without doing too much uh, more investigation. But it's interesting, we wouldn't notice this otherwise. And we can see here the occupancy rate. So if we wanna get the occupancy rate versus the availability rate, you can just do one minus. So this is showing the average occupancy rate for New York City into the future. So right now it's pretty close to like 0.95 it looks like, uh, because it's saying right as of in a few days, 95% of listings are booked, but you can see as you go forward in time, uh, more and more becomes available. If you just wait literally a few days, you can find some listings. So it looks like a nice time to book is, you know, a couple weeks in advance, you'll, you'll get a better price most likely because you'll have more options. And again, I can see here, the occupancy rate leaps around New Year's Eve. So people want to come to New York for New Year's Eve, and then it significantly drops significantly in uh, early January and then kind of teeters back up. Looks like it spikes up around May. People want to come here in the summer. And we can plot this into kind of a calendar looking uh, visualization. So this kind of shows you the more dramatic red shows when there's a lot of occupancy going on. And then you can see in 2020, interest kind of fades off. So this is just another representation of the line chart above. And I mentioned price. So let's check out the price. 
Here we can see two lines. Uh, the yellow is for listings that are still available. So like we mentioned around January, the ones that are still available obviously have a higher price than the ones that have already been booked. So people already came in and booked a good deal for New Year's Eve. They already got a lower price than what the current market is. So they did well to book that in advance. But what's interesting is we can see the opposite holds true around the Christmas months. We can see the green line, the ones where they've already been booked, is already higher. So people who are booking at the last minute are getting a good deal. So when the green line is higher, it means that that time of year, you probably are okay just waiting until the last minute. But when the yellow line is higher, you want to book in advance, such as New Year's Eve. So you couldn't get all this with just looking at some of these data points in isolation and why it's nice to do some quick analysis and look at things like this. That's it for now. And remember, all of this data we looked at is entirely unofficial. We made a lot of assumptions, but I hope I showed you that when we actually look at the data in aggregate and do some graphs and analysis, we can kind of confirm our hunches and make sure that it makes sense, as well as cross-reference data with Airbnb. So I always encourage you to do that, especially if you're working with unofficial data. Leave a comment below, what did I miss? What more do you want to see of so I can make some more follow-up videos? What other Airbnb data do you want to get? What other market data are you interested in? Let me know and I'll make more of those videos. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Leave a thumbs up if you like this so I'll make more of this or let me know in the comments what you didn't like and I'll avoid doing that in the future. That's it for now and remember, stay data driven.